Hi, today it's the 28th of September 2020 and I've come out to have a little look at the hive entrance. Some great activity here, more pollen going in. So my earlier concerns uh, over a month ago uh, were put aside uh, in terms of there seemed to be a lack of activity there. But what I've learnt, and of course this is my first year, so I'm on a very steep learning curve, is that levels of activity really do seem to peak and trough and today there's a lot of activity and I'm mainly considering uh, making measures now uh, as in the UK here we've started to have some very cold nights just to see what I can do to reduce heat loss and to prepare the hive for the winter. I've done quite a bit of research and I know there are a very differing uh, views on how much to do and what not to do. Just to say I've taken the view that I'm not going to be feeding the hive, they are going to be uh, using their own honey, I've not taken any honey. This is, uh, they arrived as a swarm in May, they do seem to have some uh, big frames full of honey in there. So I'm just going to leave them to it, I'm not taking anything. Also I'm not treating for Varroa. Um, I've taken the view of Dr. Leo Sharashkin that I'm going to just see what happens um, and I'm on board with uh, his explanation for why we shouldn't treat Varroa. I know people have differing views and that's, uh, you know, that's for everyone to decide how they want to do it but it's something I'm not doing so really it's, it's about heat loss and avoiding too much condensation in the hive are going to be my main concerns. I did some research on how I was going to deal with the heating of the space in the hive because as some of you have already noted it's a, it seems to be quite a small colony and I've I've kept open the full space in my Layens hive. Some of you talked about how really ideally I would have split it into two, two separate uh, accommodations for two two swarms but basically they've got that whole space and they are quite small um, so really I need to occupy the space so they don't have to heat the whole space over winter. Now some of you have talked about having uh, using a pillow so I thought that would be the way. I've also uh, as you may have remembered done a wax foundation as some sort of uh, to act like a curtain between the empty space and the space uh, where all the frames are but I think I need to also fill that uh, that empty space so I'm going to be using a, uh, a pillowcase I've got inside it some uh, chippings clean chippings from uh, which are used as chicken bedding and uh, I think that will be good and on top of that some uh, some hay uh, also the point of which I understand is to work to have something like a, a wicking effect so with all this moisture that accumulates in the hive over the winter months then uh, the straw sorry the hay will be able to draw in some of the moisture so that there isn't an excess of condensation causing mould uh, well and also water accidents for the bees inside the hive so that's what I'm tending to do pillowcase chippings hay and uh, and we'll see what happens my other concern has been the vent at the bottom of the hive. I didn't build the hive myself. I know a lot of you build your own, which is brilliant, but I've had to buy mine and it has a, a vent at the bottom. Now reading uh, Georges de Leon's book, it appears that uh, moss is a good use. Uh, something that could be used as insulation but also absorbs water quite well so I'm going onto my wall to see if I can find a little bit of moss to cover that, uh, that grill to keep both air coming through it but also so that it's not just completely open uh, when these frosts and when the snow comes. So I think this kind of moss looks fantastic, lovely thick layer of it it's almost like a cotton flannel, so I think I'll take some of that and see how I can use it. 
and that's lifting up in a most satisfactory piece so I think I might be using a little bit more of that as time goes on too. My other thoughts have been around provision for drinking over the winter. I remember at uh, Dr Leo's talk he uh, described a good uh, method of putting like a small, uh, like, a, like a jar lid uh, on the floor of the hive and having like a mirror or something like that stood up in it so that any condensation in the hive would be drawn to the cold uh, cold surface and the condensation would drip down creating a little pool. I'm aiming to do something along those lines but I haven't quite gathered my uh, my tools together yet. I've got um, a little uh, a little plate, it, well, it looks quite a large plate here but I think I'm going to go for a jar lid and these little uh, glass marbles really I'm just trying to make sure that really I'm thinking about uh, cold surfaces, clean surfaces and making sure that uh, there can be a little bit of moisture collected in an area to avoid uh, the condensation, to avoid the dripping, avoid the mould but also create a little pool uh, for drinking but also is going to avoid drowning. I think this is these are all the uh, the things you have to work out so uh, I'm still trying to uh, to come up with a, a solution for that and uh, see what I can find along uh, Dr Leo's uh, guidelines. So I'm going to go into the hive now. I'm aiming for this to be my last uh, sort of hive visit and I'm going to put the pillow in place, I'm going to put the moss in place and I think I'm going to put my little plate of uh, of marbles and I, I may review that but I think I'll start on that basis and see how we go and um, as I've said before I'm not intending for this to be uh, some kind of uh, for me to be any kind of authority in this I really am just sharing my journey. I do try to do some research and look carefully on how my bees are behaving and reading the weather we have here so I know people do do things differently but really I'm just sharing my own particular journey and many people will want to do things differently and that's fine but uh, here goes. As you note, I'll be taking this whole film on my own phone, so please uh, be a little bit patient if the, the frames aren't quite so clear. But I'm going to go in now and, uh, and have a look. It's been over a month since I've looked inside the hive, so I'm quite excited. But I've got my moss ready and I've got my pillow ready. Pillows here of alpaca wool, which I think you've seen before. So that's their, their roof insulation. These frames are really heavily propolized now, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm not so keen to keep on undoing them. both their sealing and their disinfectant isn't it that's the thing oh one of my frames in fact has come apart oh well there we are good job I spotted that oh I think you'll have to stop there I've got a bit of a problem